What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mel. Welcome back to Mel Got Game, where I bring you top plays, top sports news, and breakdowns of the previous week. So if that interests you, please like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into the news. So All-Star Weekend in the NBA has just passed. And it was a pretty good All-Star Weekend. It had a lot of festivities. It looked like a lot of fun. I know I had a lot of fun watching it on TV. It started off with a really good celebrity All-Star game that was dominated with a lot of dunks. From Miles Garrett, defensive end for the Cleveland Browns. Somebody get this man a contract. This man was going absolutely crazy with the dunks. Man, just check out these dunks from Miles Garrett. Look at this. Jack Harlow with the outlet pass to Miles Garrett on a fast break. Miles Garrett, one handed slam, throw it down, big man. He is a grown man out there. Stop playing with Miles Garrett. And this one didn't even count as time expired, but it was still pretty impressive. MGK has the ball. Miles Garrett steals it. And windmill slam, bro. Somebody sign this man. It's, it's players in the NBA not even doing what Miles Garrett is doing right now. I'm done. Somebody sign him. This is all the proof I need. So moving on to the Rising Stars Challenge. The Rising Stars Challenge was a little different this year as there were four teams instead of two. And they competed in sort of a tournament style format, which I really like, by the way, because it allowed a lot of us to see the competitiveness that a lot of these young players have. And it was like, hey, these guys, they don't, they don't care if it's All-Star Weekend or not. They want to go out there and win whatever prize comes with being first. So, you know, it, it just showed us a lot of the competitiveness and it showed us a lot of the young talent that was on display in the NBA. For the Rising Stars teams, we had Team Barry, Team Isaiah, Team Peyton, and Team Worthy, with Team Isaiah beating Team Worthy and Team Barry beating Team Peyton all in the first round. Team Barry and Team Isaiah faced off for the championship, with Team Barry beating Team Isaiah and Kay Cunningham winning the Rising Stars MVP. Moving on to the three point contest, it was really good this year, just like it is every year. But we had Desmond Bain, CJ McCullum, Luke Kennard, Zach Levine, Trey Young, Fred Van Vliet, Big Carl Anthony Towns, and Patty Mills all competing to be that three-point contest champion. So Desmond Bain started us off, and he set the tone with 18 points. It wasn't that bad, but then CJ McCullum came in with 19 points. He went up him. And then Luke Kennard came in, and he put up the most points in this first round. He went off for 23 points. And then Zach Levine came in with 14 points who was immediately eliminated. And then Patty Mills came in with 21 points. He eliminated Desmond Bain. Carl Anthony Towns came in with 22 points, eliminating CJ McCullum. Fred Van Vliet came in with 16 points. He was immediately eliminated. And then Trey Young finally wrapped up the first round with 22 points, and he eliminated Patty Mills. So for the final round in the three-point contest, we had Carl Anthony Towns, Trey Young, and Luke Kennard, Carl Anthony Towns went first, and he put the pressure on the competition with 29 points. He came in wanting to be known as the best big man shooter ever, and this is exactly how you do it. Trey Young was up next, and he could not top Carl Anthony Towns. He came up three points short at 26. Luke Kennard came in at third, see if he could go ahead and top Carl Anthony Towns, and he could not, just like Trey Young, he came up three points short, and Carl Anthony Towns is the 2022 three-point contest winner. He is the first big man to win the three-point contest since Kevin Love back in 2012. So moving on to the dunk contest, and how do I put this? One word to describe this year's dunk contest. Mmm, trash. <laughs> It was pretty bad. It was pretty, pretty bad. It was just so disappointing, and I was so upset that I even wasted my time watching it because I was just like, I wanted something to be, I wanted something to be excited about, just get up off my feet, just be like, oh my God, I've never seen that before. And we didn't get that. We didn't get that at all. We didn't get nothing close to it. Nothing even close, not remotely close. And the last couple of years, the dunk contest hasn't lived up to the hype that it once did, and it's just very disappointing. It was very underwhelming this year. And the sad part about it is that the rest of the festivities and All-Star Weekend, the rest of the events, they were really good. The celebrity game was really good. Uh, Three-point contest was really good. Rising Stars was really good. And then the end event, All-Star Game, that was amazing. Um, so it was just, it was so underwhelming because all we needed was just a decent dunk contest. Nothing like, nothing, we didn't need no Vince Carter dunks or we didn't need no Zach uh, Levine and Aaron Gordon part two. We didn't need none of that. We just needed a decent dunk contest that got us excited and carried us over into Sunday for the All-Star game. And we didn't get that. We didn't get that. And it was just very disappointing. I don't know. One of these days, 
Maybe somebody come through and do something that we ain't never seen before. I don't know. They need to start maybe allowing like trampolines or something. Some crazy things to, to help these guys do their dunks and just do some crazy dunks that we haven't seen before. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of the highlights, the very few highlights that we had for this dunk contest. So for our dunkers in this year's dunk contest, we had Jalen Green from the Houston Rockets, Obi Toppin from the New York Knicks, Juan Toscano Anderson from the Golden State Warriors, and Cole Anthony from the Orlando Magic. Jalen Green was actually favored to win the dunk contest per DraftKings. Let's go ahead and see how it played out. So Cole Anthony from the Orlando Magic is starting us off. His dad, Greg Anthony, brought down some Tim's for him to dunk in. And I was like, what is going on? He went full New York on us. I've never seen somebody dunk in Tim's before. This is a first, I think, for a lot of people sitting here watching this dunk contest. I'm thinking, okay, this is a good start. This is a good start. Pure creativity, this is a good start. He finally gets his bands together, and he does a little one-hand windmill slam. It, it was all right. It was a little anticlimactic because he did struggle a little bit to get his dunk. But he was he was hyped, but the crowd wasn't really that hyped. He was hyped, though. <laughs> he ended up getting a 40. Um, and I don't know. I probably would have gave him, like, an 8, maybe a 9. But if I would have given him a 9, it would have been because of the creativity with the dunk because he dunk, dunked in Tim's solely. Uh, I, I definitely probably would have gave him an 8, though. So for our next dunker, we had Juan Toscano Anderson. And he brought out Andrew Wiggins. And he dunks over him with a cradle dunk. Okay, this was pretty nice. I think it was definitely the best dunk of the first round. He was definitely showing off some athleticism. We know Juan Toscano Anderson is a gifted dunker. And he ended up getting a 44 from the from the judges. So that was pretty good, pretty good first dunk. I definitely probably would have gave that dunk a nine. So our next dunker is Obi Toppin. This is his second year in the dunk contest. And let's see what he did. He also jumps over somebody and he takes it behind his back and then dunks it. This is pretty cool. I think definitely think Obi Toppin is one of the top dunkers in this year's dunk contest for sure. This is his second year of the dunk contest, so he's definitely improved over the past year with his dunks. And he got a 44, I believe. He got one 10 from Dominique Wilkins, two eights, and two nines to make it 44. I definitely would have gave Obi Toppin's dunk a nine. For our next dunker, we had Jalen Green. And this is where it started to get a little, a little cringe, a little embarrassing, not going to lie. He had Joshua Christopher come onto the court to throw the ball off the side of the backboard so he could try to dunk it. And the dunk he was trying to do, it was just a little a little too difficult for him, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what they do. They like practice these dunks or something before they come. Like, it just seems like they just come on the court and decide, hey, I'm going to do this dunk. And then they never even tried to attempt this dunk before in their life. And then they just fail time and time again. It's crazy. Like, I'm just like, I'm not going to come on the court in front of millions of people and just do something that I've never tried before in my life and just fail repeatedly. So I think he finally came to a sense that he was like, this dunk is just too difficult. I'm just doing something simple. He ended up doing a little windmill. He caught it in midair and dunked it. A little windmill. It wasn't nothing we haven't seen before. Nothing, nothing to get up off our seats or anything to get excited about. You see the crowd is kind of just like, yeah. It was very anticlimactic and very disappointing for the favorite in this uh, dunk contest. He ended up getting a 38 uh, to go ahead and put some points on the board, put something on the board, but his next dunk was gonna have to be phenomenal to try to stay in this competition. So starting us off for our next set of dunks, we got Jalen Green again, and this dunk was definitely better than his first dunk. He did a 360 between the legs, as you see on a slow-mo here, 360 between the legs and then a dunk. It was definitely better than his first dunk, I have to admit, nothing to go crazy about. <laughs> Giannis is trying to go crazy, you see him, he's trying to go crazy. But he got nines across the board, so he got 45. I don't think it was anything to, you know, propel him into the next round or anything. But it was definitely, uh, definitely a step up from his first dunk, I have to say. Our next dunker was Cole Anthony, and he was trying something crazy. Ooh, this is like a 2K, a 2K park dunk or something. Like, this, he was trying something absolutely insane. This, like, if he would have got this, I would have been like, end it. Done. We, I don't got to see nothing more. I, have to, I don't have to see anything more. Cole Anthony definitely was trying some really creative dunks. I remember sitting in my chair like, yo, if he completes this, this will definitely be like one of the best dunks I've seen in a while for, for the dunk contest. But he ended up using too many attempts and he ended up getting all sixes across the board. It was a shame that he was not able to complete that because that definitely would have been the best dunk for this dunk contest. He ended up getting a 30 um, because 
you know, if you don't get a dunk, you get a six. I think the lowest is a six. So, so our next dunker was Juan Toscano Anderson. And Giannis over there trying to be everybody hype, man. Juan Toscano Anderson, 360 into a dunk. Okay, Steph clapping. Okay. It was pretty. It was, it was decent. It was decent. I had to admit. He was definitely throwing it down. He was definitely throwing it down with some authority. I think he got three nines and an eight. So that ended up giving him 43 points. Yeah. So, okay. I definitely probably would have given him an eight for that one. That was, I think his first dunk was definitely better, but I definitely would have probably given him an eight for this one. Ooh. I would never jump with Obi Toppin. Wow. But in a dunk contest, when he's doing all that. Yeah. I, I... So our final dunker was Obi Toppin. And let's see what he did off the backboard. Ooh, in between the legs. Okay, let me see. I got to see the, the slow-mo. Oh, okay, okay. So off the backboard, in between the legs, then they reverse slam. Okay, okay. That was pretty. That was pretty nice. That was pretty tough. That was pretty tough. That was that was definitely the best dunk of this of this round of this kind of set of dunks. Um, he wanted a ten. Look at him. He wanted a ten. He wanted nothing else but a ten. Look at him. Okay, he got four nines and then a ten. Okay, okay. I think at forty six. 46 points. Okay, I probably would. I probably would get that on a ten. I'm not even gonna lie. I probably would get that on a ten. I think they had a. I think they had a high degree of difficulty. I definitely probably would get that on a ten. For our final round of dunks, we got Juan Toscano Anderson and Obi Toppin Jr. facing off. Juan Toscano Anderson starts us off. Okay, a little windmill. Okay, it don't look like much uh, in real time. I gotta see like slow mo, like what he tried to do. Look like he tried to do a windmill and then. Oh, he okay. He tried. He tried to do the Vince Carter. It looks like. He tried to do a windmill into the Vince Carter dunk. Okay, I see what he tried to do, but it didn't. It, didn't, it wasn't giving what it was supposed to give, man. <laughs> it wasn't giving what it was supposed to give. Thirty nine. I that that's that's probably right. That's probably right. I probably would have given him an eight, maybe more, more so a seven, probably. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, if if I gotta see the replay to see what you're trying to do. It's not, I, I, I can't really give you points for that. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely probably would have given him a seven. But for Obi Toppin's next dunk, he goes off the glass in between his legs. And then with the one-handed slam, it was kind of the same dunk a little bit. I mean, a lot of the same tricks he did off the glass, through the legs, and then a one-handed slam instead of a reverse uh, slam, I guess. So I don't know. It was kind of weak to me. I, I definitely would get his probably like an eight or a seven. I don't know. It wasn't really, it didn't, it didn't really get me off my feet, but Dominic Wilkins loved it. He gave it a 10 for some odd reason. He gave it a 10. Definitely for me, it would have been between the seven and nine range. Definitely probably a seven for me, but I don't know. I don't understand how you get this a 45 and you give Juan Toscano Anderson a 39. I think Juan Toscano Anderson's dunk was a little bit better than this one, but hey, you know, we'll just see how it plays out. So for Juan Toscano Anderson's final dunk, he tried to do something a little creative, tried to come from the side, throw it up, go in between his legs, and then dunk it one-handed. But it was just a little too difficult for him. As we've seen, it was a little too difficult for all these contestants. I don't know if these guys want to come back to the dunk contest. They're going to have to try a little bit harder and get in that lab a little bit more. I'm not going to lie to you. But yeah, he ended up with six points across the board from all the judges, ending with 30 points, making his final score 69 for the entire round. So at this point, Obi Toppin could literally just do a layup and win the dunk contest. It was crazy, but he ended up, he did something. I mean, he kind of did the same dunk a little bit. He didn't go off the glass this time. He just went straight in between his legs, but he actually hit the ball on the backboard and then dunked it, which was kind of cool. You know, added a little flair to his dunk. It wasn't nothing special, but he ended up getting 47 points and Obi Toppin went ahead and won the dunk contest. So 2022 dunk contest champion is Obi Toppin. It was a it was a very underwhelming dunk contest, like I said. Dwayne Wade gave it a six. Kenny Smith was saying that the three point contest should be after the dunk contest. The three point contest should be last for Saturday. So <laughs> I don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot. I don't know. NBA gonna have to do something to spice up the dunk contest because people ain't gonna keep tuning in to watch these players miss dunks for twenty five minutes straight. So to cap off All Star Weekend, we had the All Star Game, and it was a lot of highlights. It was filled with so many highlights. And you know how All-Star Game go? I'm not going to show every highlight here. This video would be like 45 minutes to an hour if I sat here and showed y'all every highlight, like for real. But Team LeBron wins it for their fifth consecutive year. The game-winning shot actually came when DeMar DeRozan hit LeBron James in the post. LeBron James on Zach Levine. He posted him up. He posted him up. What he finna do? Fade away. Joel Embiid tried to help. It don't matter. LeBron James with the dagger, man. 
That was crazy. That was beautiful. In Cleveland, his return to Cleveland, like it was, it was just, it was magical. It was magical. But yeah, Stephen Curry actually won the MVP with 50 points. He almost broke the uh, All-Star Game record for points. Anthony Davis actually holds it with 52. But Stephen Curry has had 50. And he set an All-Star record for threes with 16. And he was actually in the midst of his worst shooting performance this year with 38% from three. And it was just mind-blowing to me just reading the stats. And I'm like, 38% is actually a pretty decent field goal percentage from three and the fact that his uh, a Stephen Curry shooting slump is better than a lot of regular players like average players shooting percentage is actually just just mom is mom boggling to me and it's like if you still don't think Steph is the best shooter to ever play this game you are sadly mistaken and you need to read these stats for real <laughs> at all Curry has got 18 so guys, that's all the time I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed All-Star Weekend as much as I did. And if you didn't get to see All-Star Weekend, I hope some of the clips and highlights I showed here helps you experience and enjoy it a little bit. The second half of the NBA season is going to be very fun and enjoyable to watch as a lot of these teams are fighting to get into the playoffs or they're fighting to get better playoff seating. So that's going to be very fun and I cannot wait to see how it all plays out. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe and I'll see you next week on Mail Guy Game. Peace.